Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Just when you thought you'd heard everything you need to hear about forearm fire, here's some more. Recently met with an individual who was named as the pitching coach for a local travel program on the basis of a very athletic and accomplished in her own little local universe pitcher in this area. Talking about forearm fire to this individual was like talking Chinese. Now, nothing against this particular individual, but this particular individual's daughter was taught to deliver the ball, hand, palm down, coming down the back side of the circle, getting to the front side, and snapping the wrist and picking the arm up in this position with elbow flexion. Now, there are two modes of movement of your lower arm from your elbow. So I'm going to get a little bit technical, but not so much that you won't understand. One is flexion. So if I'm doing bicep curls, if I'm a weightlifter, I am flexing my elbow. The other is extension. So if I'm doing tricep press downs and I'm a weightlifter, I'm doing tricep extensions. The difference between forearm fire and elbow release is the difference between elbow flexion and elbow extension. So I racked my brain because I said, well, look, I want to be open to any possibility that something is better than what we teach our athletes as optimal mechanics. And I racked my brain trying to think, well, what other athletic movements or what athletic movements, power movements, can I think of that utilize elbow flexion instead of elbow extension. And I couldn't think of it. So what do I mean? Let's talk about some athletic movements that we know use elbow extension and are maximum power movements from your elbow down to your lower arm, hand, whatever it is. Throwing overhand. elbow extension, a tennis serve, elbow extension, a karate punch, elbow extension, batting, watch my right arm, elbow extension, golf swing, elbow extension. I couldn't think of one power movement that involved elbow flexion. Yet there are so many coaches out there who are still teaching elbow flexion as a way to deliver a softball with maximum speed and command. Now my target's over there. With forearm fire, I have elbow extension and acceleration. Extension and acceleration. Any power athletic movement is extension and acceleration. My hand's going to come down the back side of the circle. Not this way, because the only thing I can do from here is push and have elbow flexion. But from here, I can extend and accelerate toward my target. If I'm finishing up here, I don't know what's up there, but it's not my catcher. So if I've got to take my hand and finish in this direction, I don't care who you are or how fast you're throwing. If you weren't doing that, you could throw faster and with greater command. Now, this particular individual, his daughter, is a marvelous athlete who trains very hard. And her innate athletic ability has brought her 63, 64, in some cases 65 miles an hour. Ooh, ah. Okay, so is that terrific? Well, you may be sitting there and saying, yeah, well, I throw 55, 56. That's great. I'd love to throw at 64, 65. But to me, 
and I've seen this individual pitch, this is an individual who's capable of throwing the ball 68, 69, 70. So if you're throwing 63, 64, 65, in your own little, little universe, you may be getting lots of oohs and ahs and your name in the paper, but if you're capable of throwing the ball at 70 miles an hour, you have stopped short of what you are ultimately able to accomplish. So I tried to explain this, didn't really understand it, but now for me, it's more important that you understand the difference. If you a basketball shot, a three-pointer, elbow extension, and I would like any of you to rack your brains like I rack mine. And I would welcome somebody sending me a power movement in any athletic endeavor that involves the arm, that uses elbow flexion instead of elbow extension to generate that power. Love to hear it. I hope that this has been useful. And again, I would really love to hear your comments on this. Talk to you next time.